everyone, Basil Chapman sitting in for Tom O'Brien. I'm the host of the Target Technicians Hour, 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. Market Days, uh, that's Eastern Time, of course, and the author of the opening call daily newsletter. Now let's look at some of the patterns that I work on all the time. Let me just show you this quickly. In the Chapman Wave, we try to identify the lowest low bar. We count each successively higher peak, alphabetize them sequentially, A, B, C, D, Ds, where other things can happen, that fourth highest peak, but it can still go to E, F, and G. There's never an H. The other thing we look at here is the patterns, only three patterns, straight up, straight down. It's a straight line. Cup formation, could be a V-shaped formation, but it's a cup formation, basically, and an arch formation, a mix of one and two or one and three. This is one and three, where the H goes to the left side low. If it goes there after just one peak, like a peak A or a peak B, and then fails, it usually goes below it, and you've got to be careful. And on the right side, straight up means if it makes this cup formation, takes out the left side low. How it does that is really important. So that's the core to the Chapman wave. I use many other things as well. And uh, so what we're looking at here is the Dow trading at 233. You see this? Mm, let me just widen this quickly. First of all, I'll show you the pattern in the large form because this is what the Dow has been the leader and we've been liking it for subscribers to opening call. I've liked it for a long time. We're actually still long uh, from the low of uh, March the 23rd of 2020. And uh, but within that context, we've taken some profits and we also have had short term uh, longs and shorts. But now what we're looking at, we have a rather aggressive long position. And what we're looking at in terms of the pattern is you see this cup formation and you see this little H pattern here that just took out the left side low of 28,715. On the 13th of October, we went to 28,660 within 50 points. And the, the MACD, the moving average convergence divergence, was moving higher. All of you have it on your, on, if you do any, any uh, trading um, through online, I'm sure your trading platform has the MACD, the moving average convergence divergence. And then there's the slow stochastic. I use the slow, not the fast one. The slow one gives you a longer time period and it's holding well, but it has gone under 80%. I like it over 80%. And the blue line you see here in the steady chart is the on balance volume. It's not that strong. And the relative strength, the RSI, is actually holding very nicely. But the key action that we look at here is when the nine goes over the 14, you can see what happened here. Uh, this green, actually talking about a green line, you see this green line over the, the black line? And it's still holding extremely well. And that says that even with pullbacks, you'd have to get a move down to under 31,000 in the Dow to see that nine period move underneath the 14 period, which would be very negative. So, so far, the Dow is the leader. Dow 30, it's not the Dow Industrials. I don't know why they call it the Industrials. For ages, we've been talking about it as really the Dow 30. Then there's another technique that I look at here. There it is. You see how I joined the upper uh, edges of the wicks in the candles? So 36,952 on the week of the uh, 5th of January. That was the high. Keeps coming down, makes lower highs. And I have a pattern that I, I, I take one trend line, and then I see if I can make a parallel line, a very thin parallel line that says this should be the resistance. I call it the, the repellent zone. When the price goes above it, or in this case, it was the propellant zone, and when the price goes and tests it and then successfully pushes away, it's like a, like a magnet when it, it attracts the price and then it reverses and, and propels the price. Well, the Dow is in the inside track as we're closing out with 45 or so minutes to go for this week, Friday, and we'll see where this closes, but it went into, touched that edge in a peak B. All the others have failed at a peak B minus, B minus, peak A failed right there, 36,824 uh, back in the uh, early part of 2022. So this is a really important moment for me because in this particular pattern, if there is a close, a decisive close above this arch formation in this weekly chart, and that says if the Dow can get, I'll give you the exact price right now, you used to have a 34,500, I think, yeah, 34,261, the, the high of the 19th of August, the week of the 19th, if it can start to close for two out of three weeks above that, we have got a trend change in the weekly chart that is very significant. Why? Because the MACD should get even stronger. The stochastic, which is only at 43%, uh, that's not very good. And the on-balance volume still needs a lot of work. But that nine period for the first time in a while will cross positive. And if it can hold positive, 
that's going to be a really strong support level. I said, talking about these moving average, I like to do things live so you can see these. I did it this morning. I'll do it again now. But I didn't show you something that I've just done. I wonder if I've got it here. Yes. So uh, I was asked about the YM. This is the 10-minute E-mini chart. I actually have, this is still a leg A. It broke above the 50% level from uh, the low of the day. What I wanted to show you was ESZ22, ESZ22, -E there it is. Uh, look at the strong, powerful move. So there's a pattern that I call the Eiffel Tower. It happens very often after the, the Fed makes an announcement or there's just something that jobs report, whatever it is, and the market sharply spikes to the upside or the downside, but in this case, the upside, and then comes back down. Well, what happens sometimes is it goes straight up. This went to an A and then pulled back, and then it went to a B and then failed. But I typed in Eiffel Tower A pattern. That means that A says you can come down and be careful of the key support levels. Well, what did we do? We made, over a period of time, we've made, look at this. He has a two-minute chart. Look, the, the, this is a two-minute chart. It shows you that this went to peak C1, C2. That acts like a D. Pulls back. Look at the time. I talk about bar symmetry. Look at the bar symmetry here. And look at the bar symmetry. I did it in another time frame. Where you, from that low to that low, look at the arch formation. It just missed matching exactly. I actually, I did it a little differently. Let's see if I can do this again. I did it in, in a different time frame. I just don't want to go there right now uh, to find it. So let's just go right there. And what I do is you don't have to have these rectangles. You can just have a straight line or you can just do it. You can count the bars. I just do this so when I demonstrate it live. You can see it. And look at that bar symmetry. Is that not unbelievable from the low that was made in this two-minute chart at 12.06 this, uh, this afternoon? Eastern time, the 37.16, we rallied, made an arch formation, came down, and at 13.10, that's 1.10 this afternoon, it goes to where? 37.17, slightly high. And then what does it do? Two bars early, it makes a low. And what is that low? Right there at 37.15.25. But now it's gone. Peak A, B, C, D. There should have been an instant restart, but there isn't. So I continue the count E, F, G, slash C. And here you've got D, and we're in leg E. And I had drawn this. I don't know where I did it, but it doesn't matter. All right, I'll do this, and then we've got a lot to discuss. Basil Chapman sitting in for the one and only Tom O'Brien. And I'll be back in a moment. The Dow is at 255.